Welcome back to the Toss the Mic YouTube channel. Today we're going over AFC North positional rankings. Let's get right into it. Alright, it's Johnny Raider from the Toss the Mic YouTube channel. You might know me from Browns Walter Picks and a plethora of other things on radio broadcasting. But today we're talking about AFC North positional rankings right here on the Toss the Mic YouTube channel. Let's get right into it, starting off with quarterback. I think this one's a little bit controversial. Some of you are maybe going to be saying that the MVP of the league should be the number one spot, but I think Joe Burrow is easily the number two quarterback in this league when healthy behind Patrick Mahomes, obviously. But when he's healthy, he can go to Super Bowls, and Lamar Jackson has proven that he can't get over that hump of the AFC Championship being the Chiefs. So I put Joe Burrow over Lamar Jackson. Behind them, I have Deshaun Watson. Now, I'm a Browns fan personally, and if you know a Steeler fan, they'll probably have them switched. But honestly, if I'm being objective here, Deshaun Watson probably has a little bit of an edge over Russell Wilson slash Justin Fields, who even knows who's starting in that position. So you really have two quarterbacks behind Deshaun Watson. It's really just the fluidity of the situation. Deshaun Watson has that boom, and the Steeler quarterback situation could easily flip to the backup within by week three. So let's look at the running back position. Derrick Henry. I have in front of Nick Chubb. I'm being a little bit modest here. If I was being full-on Browns fan right now, I'd have Nick Chubb at number one. But Nick Chubb snapped his leg, and I'd like to see him, you know, get a couple hundred-yard games under his belt. But you know what Derrick Henry can do. He's not that much of an injury-riddled machine. He could probably rattle off a 1,200-yard season for you right now, especially in that Ravens system. So I do have Derrick Henry in front of Nick Chubb. Behind those two, you know, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, that's a pretty good backfield, so that's why I have him in front of Zach Moss. Zach Moss is really all the Bengals got, and that's kind of sad. Letting Joe Mixon go, I mean, that makes sense. They weren't going to pay him Christian McCaffrey money. So they're in a bit of a rebuilding running back phase, and that's okay. They have an elite quarterback to make up for that. They'll be in a pass scheme. That's okay. It's the Bengals' way. Offensive line, let's get right into it. The Bengals are at last place. I mean, it's until they can put together a solid season of being a top 15 or even a top 10 offensive line, they're going to be the worst offensive line in this division. Now, the Steelers and Ravens, you can really flip them back and forth. They've been up and down. Some seasons, they're a horrible offensive line, and some seasons, they're back to being their normal good offensive line, and I really couldn't tell you which one of them is going to be better this year. I have no idea, but the Browns, they're coached well. They have great players, and they still are a really good offensive line. They went through some injury issues last year, so maybe they don't keep that up past this year but as of now I think they're a really good offensive line and Deshaun Watson is kind of spoiled looking at receiver the Bengals are obviously at one they still have two number one receivers playing they have T Higgins they have Jamar Chase and you know they lost Tyler Boyd but it's they still have two number one receivers and they have a lot of developmental pieces behind them you know Andre Yosivash, I think he could be a really good receiver you know I might get heat for that but I really liked what I saw when I saw him play at the tight end position, I think three teams in the AFC North have three solid superstar tight ends, while the Bengals are in a bit of a rebuilding phase with that as well, but Mike Isicki's no, no blow over himself. Number one, we got Mark Andrews, Pro Bowl tight end, really good tight end, all of the above. And then David Njoku really broke out last year. I think he's probably going to be on another all-pro, Pro Bowl sort of track. He had 900-something yards last year, seven touchdowns or something like that. that. This guy is a really good tight end, and I think he can maybe make that leap over Mark Andrews. So we'll see what happens this year. And then obviously, Fryer Muth, he's a really good tight end as well. Don't let that number three spot fool you. He's a really good tight end, and I'd take him. He'd probably be the best tight end in some divisions, I'm, if I'm being honest. All right, looking at cornerback, the Browns have the deepest room and the best room, in my opinion. They have three solid corners. They have Martin Emerson. They have Denzel Ward. Honestly, if Martin Emerson was on any other team in this league, he'd be the number one corner flat out. Come on now. And then obviously they have Greg Newsom, the first round pick at their number three spot, which is really, come on now. This guy's a really good corner. I mean, you look up film on Twitter and this guy is playing textbook man-to-man -man all the time against really good receivers and joint practices. Amari Cooper, you can see him doing this against A.J. Brown. He has really good reps and you can watch him play really good man-to-man -man except against the Texans in the wild card round. All right, looking at the Ravens, obviously they got Marlon Humphrey, they got Brandon Stevens, and they just drafted Nate Wiggins, which really puts them past the Steelers at the number two position. They are a really good corner group and will be one of the best defenses in this league. The AFC North is stacked when it comes to defenses. So if you're an AFC North fan, 
don't get too pissed off by these rankings, okay? Because a last place spot could really mean you could jump to first place by the end of the year. That's how deep this division really is. All right, looking at the Steelers, they have Joey Porter Jr., but really no one else behind them. I mean, they have Steelers' Cam Sutton. They lost Patrick Peterson. This is a really... It can be good, but it also can be really bad. Um, Joey Porter Jr. is really good at man-to-man. And for some reason, I see people saying that he's a zone merchant, which doesn't make any sense. Like, back that up. Come on now. And then the Bengals, Cam Taylor Britt. I know him. He's a really good corner. But uh, they have a lot of young guys. I'll tell you that right now. And young guys, young cornerback room compared to guys that are proven and still young in your division will put you at last place every single time. Looking at the safeties, this one's way more controversial because obviously Minka Fitzpatrick plays for the Steelers, but as you can see, I have them ranked at number three. So one good safety isn't going to put you at the top spot, and I shouldn't have said good safety. He's a really elite safety. At number one, I have the Ravens. They have Marcus Williams. They have Kyle Hamilton. That's two really solid safeties, and that's just a bit above of what I have with the Browns, Grant Delpit and, and Juan Thornhill. Really, injuries are taking away from what the Browns' safety room can really be. When they're fully healthy, they're holding teams to three points, zero points, everything along those lines. The Browns' defense really is the best in the league when they're fully healthy, and I they just can't stay healthy. That's why they are really letting it go in some position groups here. Looking at the, at the Steelers, they have Deshaun Elliott behind Minka Fitzpatrick. Get a, get a better guy. Literally, like, give Minka Fitzpatrick some help. And then the Bengals. Geno Stone is really not that guy. I'm seeing some analysts on, like, NFL Network and ESPN talking about how Deshaun Elliott really puts the Bengals' safety room past, like, the Steelers and the Ravens. What are we talking about? Deshaun Elliott had all those picks last year, but he let up so many touchdowns. They should have a system where how many picks you have versus how many touchdowns you allow. That's how you separate guys from like Jair Alexander. You separate guys like Sauce Gardner. They're not letting up touchdowns. And that's really what really pisses me off about what people say about Geno Stone. Looking at defensive line, the Browns have the best defensive line. I mean, Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith, along with a really good interior with Shelby Harris and Dalvin Tomlinson. This this is a really good defensive line. And right behind them, super close. The Steelers, TJ Watt, another defensive player of the year guy. Alex Highsmith, a really good edge rusher that nobody seems to talk about. And then obviously, you're going to have a really good interior with Cam Hayward, all those guys on the interior, you know, Keanu Benton, Mark Travis Adams, Dean Lowry, all those players, really good interior front. And then the Baltimore Ravens, they got Matt BK. They have a little bit of question at edge rushers, but they got Owe. They got... Michael Pierce, they have solid pieces for their defensive line. They still are a really solid defensive line. Let's look at linebackers now. I think this is where the Ravens really separate themselves defensively and shows really how valuable linebackers are. With Roquan Smith, they really struck a deal. They struck a gold mine with Roquan Smith. Really good linebackers. Obviously, they lost Patrick Queen, and he goes to the Steelers, and that's why I have him ranked at two. And then the, the Browns, they really do have good backers with Jordan Hicks and jo- Jeremiah Wusu koromoa But don't let that third place spot fool you, Browns fans. You're still really good at the linebacker spot. And then the Bengals, like, what are you guys doing, man? You guys got one good defensive player and Logan Wilson. I mean, I guess you could argue Jermaine Pratt, but that is nowhere close to being the third, second, or first best linebacker crew out there. And that's going to do it for the position ranking video today. We're doing really good on the Browns Walter Picks account. If you want to go follow that on both Instagram and TikTok, we're doing really good here with our shorts. So thank you. Thanks for getting us to 1,250 subscribers. Absolute, absolute love for all of you guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're doing this all the time. Let me, let me know what I got wrong in this ranking right here that you see. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day, fellas.